uh, like every really wonderful drum workshop, I'm going to start with a 25 minute drum solo and then five minutes of talking. Um, no, but uh, what I will say is I do talk a lot and I talk fast. So I told Steve to just cut me off if there's any questions and I'm happy to go back or answer anything. Um, today, I want to talk about something that is really important to me as a drummer, both in my personal practice and within my performance and composing. So although I am specifically a drummer, I use this um, when I'm composing. I uh, use this for all instruments when I'm teaching groups of musicians. So this is just a great, uh, a great thing. The one thing in common amongst all instruments is rhythm. So just a really quick, um, I wrote down a quick description of what rhythm is to me. And I just want to, for anybody that's not a musician or that is just not familiar, what's the difference between rhythm and melody and harmony? Rhythm is the placement of sound in time. So I'll just say it again. Rhythm is the placement of sound in time. Time meaning that there's movement. So we're moving forward. So rhythm musically has a forward motion. When we're reading music, you can actually see that the music is moving from place to place, or when you hear it, it's moving forward in time. Um, and the difference is that pitches or sound that has different tones, those are up and down movements. So you can sing high and you can sing low, and rhythm is the placement of those pitches going that way. Okay, so the quarter note system it sounds like extremely boring, which is why on the PDF that I have there, there are three exclamation marks after the quarter note system. So it's exciting. Um, and it may look really easy, but it is a matrix. So before we get into what it actually is, and I'll draw it out if you haven't, um, if you want to download the PDF, that's fantastic. If you have a pencil and paper and you want to write it down with me, that's great. There's going to be some times where we're going to be clapping together. So before we get into the material, let me just say that um, that this does not touch on only one factor of music, meaning when I go to practice this system, it's not going to teach me only how to play with good time or how to play fast, but it's going to also teach me how to play with a good feel, how to play really good uh, or really uh, articulate rhythm. It's going to teach me about coordination and technique. It's going to teach me how to read better and be confident when I'm reading music. Um, and most of all, it's going to teach me how to be creative, right? We want to get our head off the page. Or if we do have a piece of music in front of us, how can we be creative while reading that music? Or how can we be creative when we're in a practice room? There's so many times where I feel very uninspired or I'm doing something over and over again. How can I break that barrier? And this quarter note system is, uh, it's something that I work with, uh, with some of my mentors. One specific that I got this from is uh, Mr. Steve Davis, a fantastic drummer. Um, he actually played many years ago at the Clearwater Jazz Holiday with Lynn Ariel. And so this is something that I worked on with him, and then uh, he encouraged me to move forward and find my own path through this quarter note system. So I mentioned before that this is a matrix, and I don't want you to get scared thinking you're going to have to plug something into the back of your head, and you're going to have to take a green pill or a blue pill. It's okay. What I mean is that there is an endless amount of possibilities on how to approach this. Um, it doesn't really have a start and it doesn't have an end. It just is and it exists and there's so many ways to go about it. So uh, you're going to, uh, you're going to see how, how we can apply that. Um, I also want to say that this is a perfect system for all levels of musicians. I do this with young and old students that are just beginning or that are advanced. So uh, if you're just learning to read music or if you're just learning to hear music and understand how it sounds, this is really excellent for that as well. So here is the idea of the corner system. And again, like I said, I'm talking fast. I talk a lot, so uh, feel free to write anything down or check back in the pre-recorded, this recorded uh, uh, class. So the idea is we are going to place one quarter note. We're gonna place a quarter note in every possible place in four beats. So let me say it again. The idea of the quarter note system is to place a quarter note 
in every possible place that it could go within four beats. So let's figure out first how many that's going to be. So a quarter note is one beat. And in a beat of, in a 4-4 measure or a common time, we're just gonna use common time, there are four beats. So if you're gonna fill the whole measure, you would have one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's figure out how many possibilities there are. And we would do this with simple math, or maybe it's not so simple. So four beats in four places, that would be four times four, which equals 16. If I have that correct, I think my mom is watching. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay, four times four is 16. So let's dive in and find out if we have all 16 measures covered. If you download the attachment, uh, everything is there completed. It's like one of those cooking shows where, you know, I'm putting in the ingredients and all of a sudden they pull it out and it's finished at the end. That is there as the finished product. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it out I'm going to, uh, because we're limited on time, this is the bite size version. I'm going to move quick. So, uh, and if I need to get closer to the screen, I will. So I'm doing this with Sharpie, so hopefully you can see it. So the QNS, the quarter note system, I drew 16 bars there. And the first possible place that we could put a quarter note, which would be beat one. I'm always going to start with beat one. So there it is on beat one. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add rests on the rest of the beats, which would be two, three, and four. And I'll start slow at first, and then I'll move pretty quick. So there are my beautiful, not so beautiful quarter rests and my quarter note. If my music theory teacher is watching, hashtag sorry, not sorry. We're moving past that. So quarter note on beat one. The next possible place to put a quarter note is beat two. That's right, everybody. Thank you. So beat two, and there would be a rest on beats three and four. The next possible place that we could put a quarter note, if you've noticed, we've just moved from beat one to beat two. That's right, beat three. So rest, rest, quarter note, rest. And the next possible place that we could put a quarter note, we have one, we have two, we have three, and it is four. Excellent. So three quarter note rests and one quarter note. Boom shakalaka, we have filled one quarter note on each of those beats. But wait, there's more. So now that we have, we're finding every possibility to put quarter notes to fill these measures. So now that we have one quarter note per measure, now we're gonna add two. So let's go back to beat one, and that would be beats one and two. And again, if you're just joining me, we're doing something called the quarter note system. And it's a matrix, which means we're starting with the simplest idea, and then we're gonna expand it into every direction possible you can forget about buying all of those drum books possible, which there are fantastic books out there. Buy them and look at them and read them. But this right here, this one page, is really what I base most of everything that I play off of. And it really, really does help a lot with my rhythm and creativity and how I'm approaching music. So now we've drawn chord note on beats one and two, and beats three and four are rest. So same thing we did in the first four. We had beat one and we had beat two. Now we have two quarter notes per measure. It's beat one, beat two. Now let's go beat one and beat three. So now we're moving the second quarter note over. And again, if you're just joining us, there is an attachment that has this fully written out, beautifully written in finale, not with my hand, uh, with, with my uh, manuscript. So. If I do that correctly, it's beat one and beat three. Good, let's move over beat three to beat four. So now it's one and four. So I'm, move, I'm moving quickly through this. If this was a longer and private lesson, I'd be adding a lot more cheesy jokes and I'd be moving very, very slowly. So we have beat one and beat four. There's no other place that beat four can go. So let's move over beat one and let's reset the second, the, the fourth beat. So beats two and three.
and I'm doing this in Sharpie and I thought ahead of time that I always make mistakes. So I have, I have the printed copy next to me and I'm just going to check to make sure I'm doing it correct because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to mess up, you know, it's live. So here we go. We filled in almost every possibility of two beats per measure. We have beats two and three. Now let's move to beats two and four. In jazz, this is our bread and butter, beats two and four. Or if you're playing pop music, the back beat on two and four in the snare drum. So that's what that looks like. Later, we'll hear how it sounds like. So we've done one and two, one and three, one and four, two and three, two and four. Let's move over beat two to beat three. So now we have three and four. So quarter note, quarter note, three, four. I'm so glad there's ink in this Sharpie. Could you imagine if it ran out? I have to have to run to the other room. It's like the battery's dying, a microphone or something. Okay, we filled in every possible version of two beats per measure. And in the top line, we filled in every possibility of one beat per, uh, per measure. So now let's move to three beats per measure. And that would be one, two, and three. So a quarter note on beat one, beat two, beat three, and a rest on beat four. If you have it downloaded, that's great. If not, it looks like that. And one, two, and then that beat three is gonna move over to beat four. As I always say, we're gonna get past the boring part and get to the fun part. Watching the water boil, you know, and then you put the pasta in, it's not always exciting, but once we get to the actual real cooking. Okay, so one, two, four. All right, we can't move the four over. The one is staying where it's at. Let's move beat two to beat three. If you're not following or you're just joining, it's okay. We're almost there finishing the, the hard part, which is writing it out, <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be okay. Okay. One, three, four. Good. We have almost every possibility beats two and three, uh, sorry, three and four rather are filled. Let's move over beat one to beat two. So we have two, three, four. And if you can see, they're all scrunched up at the end of that measure there, beats two, three, and four. There's no place that they can go. They're, they only can fall off the cliff at this point. Um, if Ken Poplowski was here, he would say, just like my career, but he's not. So we'll move on to the next measure. And we have three notes filled. So let's move to the next measure, which would be what? Anybody, can you put your fingers up and tell me? That's right, Lee, because it's the only person I can see. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Four. Four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. This is measure 15. Four times four is 16. So it seems that we've hit a roadblock and we've filled in every possibilities. That's right. So if we have all of them filled, we also need to have the shadow version of that, which is nothing there, all rests. So all quarter notes and no quarter notes. So all quarter rests. These are not good looking quarter rests. I'm sorry, guys. I would have, you know, really, there we go. This is, guys, this is the quarter note system. This is what I'm talking about. Ta-da. So like I said, in every cooking show, they like pull out the really good like pre-made version they did earlier, like 20 times. That is in as an attachment. So you can, you can download that. I, but I highly suggest you write it out and actually know what it feels like writing the quarter notes and you, you get to know the system a lot better. Now, we got past the drawing part of it. And so now let's see how, how do we use this, okay? If you have it in front of you, you can reference it. Um, I'll try to hold up. I'll try to, you know, I, I don't, I'm not using share screen or split screen today. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. 
All right, how do we use this? Let's start with the simplest version because why would we go to the most advanced insane version in the world? Let's start from the basic idea of what this is. We could play these as quarter notes. We could actually just clap this rhythm. So uh, it beat one with three beats after it. I'm just gonna do the first measure. First measure is a quarter note on beat one followed by three quarter rest. It would sound like this. One, two, ready, play. Clap, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good, so I did the first measure two times in a row. That's the simplest way of doing it. Measure two would be a rest on beat one and a clap on beat two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It, I would say it sounds simple, but it may not be for everybody. And if you were to go through the whole 16 bars, you'd try to do that maybe without messing up or without slowing down. However you wanna practice it, that's a great way of just practicing simplistic quarter notes in every possible version, okay? So, uh, and you could do that, if you wanna put it on your instrument, I could play this on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that was the first four measures. Every possible place one quarter note could go. Okay, so let's expand now. Like I said, we're, this is the bite-sized version. I'm not even sure how much time I have left. Maybe I've spoken for two minutes. Maybe I've spoken for 20 minutes, who knows? So we could simplistically just play those as quarter notes but let's move on to it as the system is what it is. So now let's think of it similar to algebra. Ugh, school is done. I don't wanna do algebra. I hate algebra. It's okay. So the quarter note is no longer a quarter note. The quarter note is X equals. So the quarter note equals what? Question mark. It could equal anything. It, I mean, it's not gonna equal apple pie or chocolate cake, which are fantastic, but what they're gonna equal is other rhythms. So let's say that every time we see a quarter note, every time we see this quarter note, we're going to play two eighth notes. What? No, but it's a quarter note. It can't change the function. It's okay. We're using our creativity and we're going to uh, hear how that sounds. So every time we see a quarter note, we're going to clap twice and we're gonna say one and, okay? You can do this with me. I'm going to do the first measure four times. I almost did this, four times, okay? Here we go. Every time there's a quarter note, we're gonna clap one and, okay? Four times, one, two, ready, go. One and, two, three, four. 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 Four. Good, excellent, A plus, everybody. Seriously, let's go have lunch. Um, so that was the quarter note system using eighth notes. So we basically turned it into the eighth note system. We didn't have to rewrite this whole thing out with eighth notes. We just used our imagination that quarter note equals two eighth notes. So let's do the first four bars. So I'll hold it up so you can see what it looks like. If you download the PDF, that's fantastic. If you wrote this out with me, I should take you out to lunch because that's cool. So it looks like there's a quarter note on beat one, two, three, and four, but really our imagination is gonna say those are actually eighth notes. So here we go, clap this with me. One measure each, there's four measures. Those are eighth notes now. One, two, ready, play. One and two, three, four. One, two, and three, Four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Excellent. Two things. I'm just simply clapping. I practice all the time by tapping and clapping. It doesn't always need to be, you know, Elvin Jones on the drum set. It's okay to just clap and tap. That's rhythmically, that's really good. And number two, I'm always counting aloud. Uh, the main reason why I'm counting aloud is, well, well, there's two reasons. One, to know where I'm at in the measure. And number two, 
so I know that I'm breathing. And it sounds funny, but when I'm doing something that I'm not used to or that's uncomfortable or that's new, I, I, I tend to hold my breath. And if you hold your breath, you, it's not good. So please count aloud and breathe through these exercises because that will help you. That'll help with good time and technique and coordination and all of those things that I talked about in the beginning of the session. Good, so, all right. So we moved from the quarter note system to what is the eighth note system. And we could do this, let's say on our drum set um, or any instrument, you can pick two notes. So I'll, I'm gonna play the, the eighth note, the eighth notes, the quarter note is the eighth note through the quarter note system, and I'm gonna change up the sound each hit, okay? So ready? One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three, four and. Okay. All I did was orchestrate sounds for the same exact thing that we were clapping. And this is, this is a really great, easy way to be creative within a piece of music. If um, my bandmates in La Lucha hand me a piece of music and they say, hey, I think it's really cool in this part of the song if you catch those hits. Well, they may not write out drum notation. They just may have the melody written there. And I want to be a little more creative with how I approach that sound, um, whether it's something that's going to have color and ring over, or if it's a short sound um, or, or, or a low you know, thud from the bass drum or something. So I'm using my creativity based upon what I hear, but also just kind of taking a chance approaching those rhythms because not everything may be written out or, you, or the what's written out may not be the best option. Um, okay, good. So that was a quick exploration into how it's applied on the drum set. And I was surprising myself with how I was approaching those sounds. Um, now, let me quickly say that um, there is no specific, there's nothing here in this quarter note system that says I need to start from measure one. Nothing. Like I said, it's a matrix. I could start from measure seven. I could do measure seven 20 times and then go to measure one, then back to measure seven 20 times, then measure two. So if it's, if there's something, one that you really enjoy or one that you just absolutely are challenged with, let's say, this one uh, that's one, two, three. And let's say we change the algebraic uh, formula to X equals triplets. So every time you see a quarter note, you're going to play a triplet. Okay, so that's one quarter note, one triplet. Okay, so rather than going through and writing this whole system out in triplets, we're just using our, this thinky brain to change what it looks like in, on the page. So this would be three triplets in a row. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay? And I'm just using single strokes. I'm not diving into stickings or rudiments right now. It's just however you want to get it out. If it's one hand, fantastic. Good. So I'm going to play this measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Let's say measure eleven which is three quarter notes followed by a rest. And it's actually gonna be three triplets and a rest, uh, three eighth note triplets followed by a rest. And then I'm gonna go to measure one and I'll play that once. So it'll be four measures all together. This measure three times, the first measure one time. Here's what it sounds like. Um, I'll step quarter notes in my hi-hat for now. In addition, I'll, uh, I'll count a lot. One, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet, two, three, four. One triplet, two, three, four. Okay, so I made a little musical rhythmic phrase out of it. It had sort of like uh, a melodic tilt to it as well. You can do that fast, you can do that slow. I could orchestrate that whole thing on the drums. I could keep going back and forth. I can go to any drum that I would like. 
as long as I'm following whatever the rule that I set. I set the rule, I created the world, and that is, you know, triplets every time you see a quarter note. Now, like I said, we're moving quickly. You could write out any rhythm that you want. It could be 16th notes, it could be eighth notes, it could be the first and fourth part of the 16th note, and every time you see a quarter note, it's that. So there's, like I said, this is similar to algebra, which is X equals, which is the quarter note. Now in algebra, we also usually have a Y equals. And I know you're probably thinking, uh, Mark, you're not a mathematician. There's a lot more to algebra than X and Y equals. But for right now, uh, we are, we're just using X and Y. So what is our Y equals? Does anybody know? And while you answer, I'm gonna take a sip of my rhythm tea. Not all at once. Okay, so if X is the quarter note, Y would be the other thing in the measure that's there, which is our quarter rest. So again, you're thinking, wait, Mark, but those are rests. We can't do anything except rests. Well, we're being creative. We're breaking the rules. The rests are no longer rests, my friends. They are whatever we want them to be because this is the quarter note system. It is the matrix. I can be Jean Valjean if I wanted to. Okay, so we can assign anything we want to that rest. What do we want to assign? So let's do this. The quarter note equals the quarter note, the original quarter note. Every time we have a rest, we're going to play the eighth note, two eighth notes, okay? And I know I'm just, I'm just doing rhythmic clapping. I'm going to put this onto the drum set soon. Um, I may need a time check soon because I don't see it, but I just want to make sure that I have enough time. Yeah, you're good. Um, hey, Mark, you're good. We're, we're about six o'clock, but we, we, this is the la our last session of today. Oh. So, you know, we have, we have as much time as you need. Excellent. I'm here until 1 a.m., guys. So get right. some tea, put your pajamas on. Let's do this. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. The quarter note is the quarter note. The eighth rest is two eighth notes. So that first measure, let's go back to measure one. It's a quarter note on beat one, followed by three rests, which are going to be filled with eighth notes. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. That's as simple as it is. It's a rhythm you may have never played or maybe you have played it, but I just, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh my God, I just explored something or a rhythm that I've never played. And you may want to explore that on the drum set. Soloistically, it's fantastic. Okay, let's dive forward into maybe something in the jazz world, which would be comping. Comping really quick is when, um, and in drums, in, on, on, for a drummer, it's when we're playing time and we're uh, complementing or responding to a soloist or the melody with another limb of our body, which might be the snare drum or it might be the bass drum. Um, let me just say that I have a bass drum pedal here, but I do not have the bass drum with me which uh, Alejandro is watching, and I know he'll appreciate that because there's a good La Lucha uh, story about showing up with the pedal, but no bass drum there at a recording studio. They said, to, you know, they said they'd have a bass drum, just bring your pedal, and they meant the opposite. Anyways, um, good. So I'm going to play, you know, stereotypical jazz ride pattern. Thumbs up. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna just play that really kind of stereotypical jazz ride pattern with the hi-hat on two and four. What I'm gonna do with the quarter note system is I'm gonna go back to the basic, which is play the quarter note as written in my left hand on the snare drum. And I'm gonna play just following the quarter note system comping in my left hand. So here's how it sounds. Follow along with me if you'd like. And you can clap along and that would follow this. One, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Press two, three, four. Okay, that's playing the quarter note system. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll be here together until 1 a.m. Uh, quarter note system played in the original form on the snare drum with jazz ride pattern. You can go through and decide to do that quarter note system with your bass drum uh, exactly like that. You can go through and say every other measure, I'm going to change up the sound of where my left hand or foot's going to be. So first measure, I'm going to play it as a snare drum. Second measure, bass drum, back to the snare drum. So you can alternate between the sounds. And that, if, if I had the bass drum, you could hear that it would start to sound almost like bebop in a way that you're creating this melodic conversation between the two instruments. Okay, you can, uh, let's go to the X equals Y equals. So same thing. Uh, let's do something that's a little more advanced. So we're gonna move forward. Like I said, this is bite size. We're gonna move forward so I can give you an option on how to approach this. So the quarter note is going to equal the second eighth note. So instead of having two eighth notes, it's going to be the second eighth note. So it's the upbeat in a swing version. So it's kind of like the third triplet, if anybody understands that. Anyways, it would be one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. And this is great because this is where we really get into the uh, veggies and potatoes of what it really, the feel of jazz. And if you're reading a chart, uh, that's what it sounds like. And if you're thinking, why did he say veggie and potatoes, not meat and potatoes? It's because I am a vegetarian and that could be a separate question for another class. Okay, good. So I'm gonna play the jazz ride pattern here. And I'm going on the snare drum, I'm gonna play the upbeat or the and of the, uh, the and of the eighth note, okay? If you're following the quarter note system, I'm not playing beat one, I'm playing the and of whatever beat that lands on. Here it goes. One, two, three, four. One, and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, four. And one, and two, and three, and four. And one, two, and three, and four. And Okay, that was the first four measures only. You could hear the difference between everything I did before that. I didn't change anything except where it was placed by an eighth note. And already it sounds like the hippest thing I've ever played. I surprised myself like, wow, after three months of not playing, it sounded pretty okay. Okay, so <laughs> uh, this is the idea of what the quarter note system can do. If you want to work on soloing, again, pick two different rhythms. Quarter note equals triplet. The quarter note rest equals the 16th, four 16th notes. So one triplet, two, and three, and four. Going from triplets to 16th notes is difficult. That's, that's really, I mean, it's difficult for me. It's hard to change that flow of uh, sound within the time and really feeling good and in time with good technique, good coordination, good feel, and all of those things we talked about. Um, and so you could orchestrate those. Every time I have the quarter note with the triplet, I'm gonna play that on my small tom, which would be right here, but it would block this part of me. So it would be one triplet, two and three and four and one triplet, two and three and four and one triplet, and you can go through the whole quarter note system in any way you want. Slow, fast, starting with the end to the beginning, measure seven to measure one, measure seven to 
to measure two, measure seven to measure three, and so on. You create the world in which this quarter note system exists. If you are uh, playing a melodic instrument, pick two or three notes and only play those. Uh, I had this conversation with Alejandro on a long drive about um, kind of like that tower of power feel and how difficult it is to get those 16th notes on, on the bass. You could go through this whole thing and every, okay, it's gonna be 16th notes only on, you know, two different notes or three notes or one note only. Da, 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 two, three, four, one. Da, 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 three, four, one, two, da, 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 whatever it is. Go through the quarter note system, slow and fast. Uh, go up your scales doing this. So you're not only practicing your technique, your coordination, your time, your feel, your, uh, your tempo, how rhythmically accurate you are. Um, you're practicing your, your reading. You're practicing your creativity on the instrument and you can never run out of ideas. Um, and every time you say like, oh, I sound bad, or I, I'm tired of practicing, I've ran out of something to do, sit there and think of something to do with the quarter note system because it's there for you and it's allowing you to be creative and there's nothing wrong that you can do with it. Um, it's yours to do with whatever you want. I'd, I'd love to hear uh, what you, how you're approaching it. If you have questions for me, you are more than welcome to reach out to me through my email or through the Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation. Um, let's be in touch because I'd love to hear what, how you're approaching the system. And this works for every style. I, I do this a lot with Brazilian music um, and all Latin style, other Latin styles as well. And um, if I'm working on a pop song, I put the quarter note bass drum, uh, the quarter note system in my bass drum in different rhythmic forms. So it's all just about being creative and uh, trusting your creativity. So I look forward to the, the next sessions. The next one is going to be exploring triplets and it's, it's gonna be really based off of a lot what how I ended this one. Um, so if you can go back and watch this class. You can share it with your friends and families and your neighbor's pets and uh, you know grab a piece of paper. You're gonna doing a lot of lap tapping in the next ones. Um, but I, I do wanna say, uh, you know, I appreciate you being here. Uh, it's, I know it's not always easy being creative in times like this, but even simply listening to an artist or checking out an old record or just tapping along with something, that's, that's you being creative. That's you practicing. So there's no wrong or uh, right way to, to practice appropriately as long as you're just actively being involved in the thinking about music really. So uh, continue uh, to share this with your friends and all those people you mentioned, Steve, are amazing. I not only play with them, but I listen to them regularly. I buy their albums and uh, I, uh, and uh, more than that, uh, keep loving each other. Okay. Support each other, please. Thank you.